Can you take a question of the U.S. Africa Summit? Can you take a question of the U.S. Africa Summit? Karel, why is it so hard to take a question on the U.S. Africa Summit when the president is with 50 African leaders, the biggest garden of leaders of his administration? Why is it hard for you to give me a question? It is not hard. I've answered. I've. Would you let me answer the question, or are you get okay? Okay, I, I'm trying to answer your question. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I just tried. You wouldn't let me. Go ahead. I just tried, and you would not let me, sir. So your colleague is going to ask a question. Go ahead. No, I just, I literally just tried to answer your question. You shut me down. So now your colleague is going to. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Now let, let let me let me ask you this. So I, I don't think Kareen John, uh, John um, Pierre, that's her name, right? Can I don't think she's a super. I don't think she's a. I don't think she's a bad person. I just think there's an agenda that she has to go by, and if she doesn't apply, then obviously you know, because there are times where I don't. First of all, me personally, I don't think she can handle the job. This job is just it's too much. Not and, Biden, nah. Yeah, it, it's too much. Like this is how can you you know with all these lies and everything? But my question to you is. How much do you think it's her or how much do you think it's them telling her okay. to make sure that you specifically, you don't get those questions off? Yeah. So you, when, when you do the job of press secretary, I, I don't think she's a bad person also. Yeah. I believe that she's, I believe that deep down she's a good person, but I believe that the job is tough and, but she needs to assert her independence. You know, so the White House has a way it, operate, right? It's been operating that way for 100 years or 200 years, the same things. You have the top networks, you have the top, the key people who sit in the front row seat. And then you need to call on them first. And and so usually- Who, who would those people be? Peter Ducey, so you have the CNN and the they Fox moved them back. And now they've been yeah. sidelining. They've been, they've been sidelining Fox News for a few for a few weeks. Like the sometimes do we call on Fox News at the end of the briefing? They don't call on him, you know, when they call on the people in the front rows. And he asks really great questions. Peter asks great questions. Jackie asks really great question. So you have the CNN, the MSNBC, the AP, the, you know, the people in the front end, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the same people. And so usually what the White House does is, you know, the White House reaches, reaches out to journalists and asks them if they have topics they would like to discuss, aka questions. And so they can do research. And so uh, we sit down, Karen Jean-Pierre, we sit down with her team, we try to find answers. And do you have them in the binder? And so when she comes to the briefing rooms, to the briefing room, pardon me, she already knows the topics <laughs> or the questions she will be asked. And so if she doesn't have your question in the binder, she sees you as a danger. She's more safe with the people who have reached out to her, the people who have sent her topics and questions. Hey, Simon, may I, may I interject just for one second? Um, I, I first of all want to acknowledge that I think that's complete BS. Not what you're saying, but how they already have the questions in their binder before they come out there. But for us, when we go to look at it, they act as if they've never seen that question be answered. I mean, asked before, and yeah. now I got to go look into it. And it's like they keep on pushing the goal line back and it's back and back and back and back. Why do they do that, man? It's ridiculous. It's a sham. It's a sham. It's a show, right? For the people watching at home, it looks like a really great press briefing. You know, uh, journalists asking questions and the press secretary, you yes. know, providing answers. But a lot of those answers, she already has them in the binder. So she's reading them. And so what Saki was doing was she was able to pretend as if she wasn't reading them. I think Karine Jean-Pierre, one of her challenges is she reads a lot. She relies a lot on the binder and uh -huh. she has to go through the notes. And you know, she had that problem when she just came in. Um, Yo, man, we already knew this, man. 
Yeah, and and so she's not a bad person. She's a good person doing a tough job, and she's not able to assert her independence. You <laughs> understand that as a minority person, she has to, you know, be fair to people. And be, being fair to people means from time to time you take a question from Africa. From time to time yes. you take a question from the people you don't call on. And being fair means you don't need to call on people who are your friends only. You should call on people who have questions for the American people. Because even though I focus on US-Africa relation, I'm still doing the job for the American people and for the African people. And so if you sideline me because I'm asking you questions that are not in the binder, or because I ask a tough question, because I challenge Saki for banning African nations when the virus is in different other countries. What you are doing is you are, you are doing a disservice to the American people. Yeah. You are not allowing that debate. And so what happened, that's why that press briefing sometimes is very dull, because you already know the question that will be asked or topics. The White House calls, calls it topics, and people end, end, end up telling you that. And end up telling you, I want to talk about Ukraine. Maybe how much money should we continue to fund Ukraine? Something like that. So, okay, that's the topic. But that's actually the question. And so, when she comes to the briefing room, sometimes people ask her one question. She give an answer for another question that was in the binder because she thought oh that was God, the question that's... we will ask her. And <laughs> and then she will, and, and then she will, you know, she will say, okay, no, I thought you were asking me this question. And so. I acknowledge that it's a tough job, but it doesn't make sense to rig the press briefing because it's almost like you're rigging the press briefing. What you're doing is you have the questions, you have the people that you want to call on, you have, and, and then you have the people you don't want to call on. For instance, you don't want to call on someone from the Washington Times. Right. You don't want to call on someone from the Daily Caller. You don't want to call on someone from the New York Post because they will ask you about Hunter Biden and the laptop. And yeah, they're, they're going to ask the tough questions, man. Yeah, ask tough questions that you don't have in your binder. Yeah. And so the best way to assess Karine Jean-Pierre was during this last crisis on classified document. And now suddenly people are not sending questions because people have tough questions on the classified document. Yeah. Yeah, she finds herself in the briefing room. She doesn't have questions, and it shows how unprepared she was because she didn't have answers on location, on basic answers about classified document. How many batches do we still have? She, you know, she had she gave incomplete information, false information. Didn't know. Refer everyone to the White House Counsel or the Justice Department, which was a shame. Here's the thing, Simon, um, and I understand exactly what you're saying. As a matter of fact, I agree with a great majority of what you're saying, but I think you're far too honest, bro. Um, and what I mean is um, you give her far too much credit as far as not knowing. I believe that she knows, but I believe you put people first. But um, Pierre, Karine Jean-Pierre and most <laughs> of them press secretaries, press secretaries, they put their president for, I mean, their boss first. And their job is to protect and be the guard dog of whoever they're representing now. That's the reason, to be honest with you, that's the reason why at first I did not like Kaylee McEnany. That's the one who was the press secretary for Donald yeah. Trump. Yes. Because I was told that Trump was racist, Trump was this, Trump was that. And when I saw Kaylee McEnany, I was like, man, she always defending Trump. She always, she always, she always. And then I started seeing her. And one thing that she started doing that impressed me was she was being completely transparent with everybody. Take it how you want. I'm going to answer your question exactly the way you want me to, and I'm going to give you the same attitude you got. Now, whether she gave you the answer that you wanted, you still respected her for being honest, yeah. from up, up front, transparent. Now, you might have a different idea because you said right in front of her, but myself, I'm on the other side of the screen. So if I'm saying something completely disingenuous to you, Feel free to let me know, bro. No, I, to I totally agree with you. I, I believe that the way uh, Trump was treated, right, mm -hmm. is totally different from the way uh, President Biden is being treated. Uh -huh. uh, they, they are the two standards. And, and if you want to do journalism, if you want to write people's stories, you, it's, you can't do it effectively if you have your biases. 
Yes. And so what happens is it's called confirmation yeah. bias, right? So I come to you to write this story about you. And, and maybe I know you're a Democrat, or a Republican. And so when I come to have an interview with you, I'm not coming to listen to you. Uh, I come to confirm the biases they already have about you. And so that's what happened to Trump, and that's what is happening to Biden. And so, um, you know, they said it on the view the other day. They said, you know, Biden seems to be honest, so we trust him on the classified document. But Trump doesn't seem to be honest, so we won't trust him on the classified document. But it's the same thing. You are not supposed to have classified document in an insecure, insecure place your place at home or anywhere outside is skipped. If you do, you are breaking the law, whether you are President Trump or you are President Biden. And so what's going on is we justify, we don't treat people the same way. And at least she had credibility. I'm going by Kelly. She had that credibility. Right now, Karine Jean-Pierre, by now giving us answers and by even lying, like, you know, Imagine you've been in the White House and they're asking you, has the search for classified document been completed? And you said, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She went viral for that. Yeah. And then and then we discover that not only you are aware that it's not complete, you are aware that it's not complete because they are doing it. And you're also aware that there are other searches that took place before the election. Yep. And, and so once you lose that credibility... People don't trust you anymore. And so it has nothing to do with being black. It has nothing to do with all the press secretary. They behave almost the same way. They have two jobs. First job, to protect the president. Second job, to work with the press corps. But they have to be honest with the American people. They have to say the truth. So if you lie, you lose credibility. If you lose your credibility, people don't trust you. The press card doesn't trust you anymore. The American people doesn't, don't trust you anymore. And, and so that's what she's facing. Right now, her credibility is low. Is low. And, and I think maybe we need some big stories. And I don't know how she will recover, but she, she's trying to recover. Yeah, it seems that uh, she's having a tough time with that. But one thing I've noticed about the American people is that it's already split, right? So, like you said, the view. Oh yeah. They will over. They will oversee all of this stuff. They don't care. Like at this point, this is something I say on my channel too. Is like people don't care. Like, I can prove to you, like the con the conversation that we're having. This is a lie. This is a lie. This is a lie. Yeah. They'll find a way around it. So let me ask you this question, and I want to go back to Trump real quick. So. Of course, you know, Van went through it. I went through it. And it seems that you went through it where you red is wrong, right? Republicans are all racist. You know, the right side yeah, is yeah. just the bad side. You know, I grew up in welfare. You know, this man right here grew up in welfare as well. So we I kind of was already installed in me like any Republicans. They're just like white nationalists, racist, all this stuff. Yeah. I kind of want to get your story on what made you change your mind about Donald Trump. And if you have changed your mind about Donald Trump. Yeah. So even let, let me talk about the Republicans first. Right. So I I grew up in Africa. So I used to watch CNN. Everyone watches CNN. Oh, yeah. And in Africa, most people who watch CNN don't really understand that it's a liberal network. And so um, the Republicans were bad. They were racist. They were all white guys with no college degree who live in the Midwest, who don't like black people. Um, they are extremely bad people. All of them. All of them are bad. All of them are racist. The Democrats, they are the good people. All of them are good. All of them like all kinds of people. And so when I got to the U.S., that was the attitude I had. And so I, I endorse President Biden. I, you know, I do everything liberal. I, I don't want to have anyone as friend from the Midwest. I don't want to have, once anyone tells me to watch Fox News and to watch the read the wow. Daily Caller. You, you, you were, you were, you were close minded. Yeah, here. yeah, my mind was totally closed. So I wasn't even listening to them. I, 
even when I was looking for a girlfriend and I go on a dating app, <laughs> I so then I don't even get close to someone who says they are, you know, Republican, con- Republican like that, yeah. or conservative, you know, all those things. And and so my mind was closed and closed up, fully closed up. I and I didn't even know. I didn't know. Like so I just thought that was the right thing. I believe that that was the truth. I didn't really understand the media landscape in the US. I didn't understand that the New York Times will tell you that Trump said this in secret about Africans, but we say that the Hunter Biden laptop story is false. And the same New York Times. I didn't understand you know, you need to be in the U.S. and interact with people in the U.S. to really understand them. And, and so I was close-minded until I began to do these things at the White House and I began to see the hypocrisy and, and I began to... Your change happened. It's crazy because our change happened online. His change actually happened in the White House. Yeah. I think that's like, <laughs> that's yeah. literally insane to think about, bro. Yeah. Like your change... You're, yeah. you're like, that's yeah. why. My, my change, yeah. my perception, the truth. I saw the truth in the White House. I saw the truth in the White House. Wow. And I began to see the hypocrisy, the fact that Africans were banned for the same variant that was in the UK, in Hong Kong, in Europe. Um, and when I asked them for justification, no one was giving me justification. And I began to realize that when I tried to go see the press secretary, I stay in line and I have people come behind me, you know, they say, you come first, you come first, you come first. In the White House, I began to see that when I tried to ask questions, I couldn't have, get, I wasn't called on. Um, and once I challenged them once, they got more upset because they felt like they gave me the opportunity to ask a question once. It seems I didn't know my place. And and now that I've challenged them, it seems I don't know that they don't, they are not accountable to me or to the people that I represent. And I began to see how different they were treating me. And then I began to open up my mind. I began to have really uh, interaction with Republican and conservative who work for Fox News and Daily Colors and other people. And I began to know them as people. And they began wow. to also invite me on shows and come and tell your stories. And then those were the people who were supposed to be racist. Those were people who were supposed to hate black, black. And I began to really get to know them on individual basis, hanging out, doing stuff, go hiking, and and, and having fun. And, and I got to realize that people are just people. Like, like, people are just people. Get to know people. Get to know the person. Don't judge every single Black person as Black people. Know that person. Get to know that particular person. And it, it was a long journey for me to get there. 